Okay, today's lab is the behavior of gases, the molar mass of a vapor. So the goal of today's lab is to calculate um, the molar mass of a vapor and then to identify what your unknown was based on whatever a molar mass you calculate. Um, so we're going to be doing this by using the ideal gas law. You can see here the ideal gas law written on the board, PV equals NRT. Remember where P is pressure. Um, today we're going to use pressure in millimeters of mercury, that is MMHG. Um, volume, today we're going to be using the volume in milliliters. Uh, remember that N is moles. Uh, and there's a little side note about moles that we'll get to in just a second. Um, R is that gas law constant. Uh, the R value, the gas law constant, uh, you can see on the board it has two values. Um, so you're going to pick the correct R value based on the units of your volume and pressure, whatever you're using in your experiment. Um, so it could either be uh, 62,400 that has units of millimeters of mercury times milliliters divided by Kelvin mole, um, or you could use the 0 0.0821, and that has units of liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole. Um, like I said before, our pressure today is going to be in millimeters of mercury. Our volume will be in milliliters. Um, so we're going to use that 62,400 mmHg ml uh, divided by Kelvin mole um, for your R value when you get to making some calculations. And then T is the temperature. Remember for any gas laws, including the ideal gas law, that your temperature must be in Kelvin. Um, otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay, Make sure that you always have your temperature uh, in Kelvin. Okay, So I so said we're going to go back to that moles. So if you should remember that generally you're going to calculate moles by using the mass divided by molar mass. Okay, so there I've just kind of substituted in an orange. Um, moles is equal to the mass of whatever it is. In this case, it's going to be the mass of our gas divided by molar mass. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to substitute that in for P into PV equals nRT for the n value. So here on the top part, I have substituted in for moles, mass divided by the molar mass, and then I want to solve for the molar mass. Um, so the goal of your experiment today is to calculate the molar mass of a vapor and then to identify it. Um, so there's a kind of an in-between step there so that I can solve for the molar mass where I have molar mass times PV equals the mass times RT, and then to just isolate molar mass um, this is just algebra, I just substituted in. Um, we have the molar mass is equal to mass times RT divided by PV. So in your experiment, what you're going to find is going to be the mass of your vapor, um, the temperature, so the temperature of your vapor is going to be the same as the temperature of your boiling water bath. We're going to have to vaporize this unknown liquid to make it into a gas. Um, so that temperature is going to match the boiling point of our water bath that we'll take in a little bit. Uh, pressure is going to be the atmospheric pressure just inside the lab. I have a barometer that we'll use um, to find that value. And then the volume uh, is going to be the vo it's going to be the same as the volume of our flask that we're doing this um, inside. Um, so remember that gases take up the entire volume of their container. So if our gas is in this flask, the volume of our gas is equal to the volume of that container. In this case, it is um, a 125 milliliter flask. We need to find the exact volume of that. Uh, it's not going to be exactly 125 milliliters. We'll have to use a graduated cylinder and fill it up with water to figure out that exact uh, volume. Um, so next we'll talk about what you need to set up this experiment and then we'll vaporize our liquid and start calculating that molar mass. Okay, here I have all of the stuff that we need to use for this experiment. Um, so starting on the far side of that table I have a ring stand. We're going to clamp our flask to that and then lower that into the boiling water. Then I have the hot plate here. Uh, we're going to need to use a boiling water bath. Then moving on from the hot plate, I have our beaker. So this beaker here is a 600 milliliter beaker. You're going to uh, have your water bath in that. It's going to be a boiling water bath. We'll fill that up in a minute. 
And then our flask, this is where our unknown, our sample is going to go, um, that we're going to have vaporized to a gas, from a gas to a liquid. So I have a 125 milliliter flask. Um, before we get started, we're going to take the mass of that flask with a rubber band and a piece of aluminum foil on it. Then we have our clamp, that's going to clamp it into the water bath. I have some graduated cylinders to measure the volume of our unknown, uh, of the unknown liquid, not the volume of the unknown gas, just the volume of the unknown liquid that we're going to vaporize. Then I also have a larger graduated cylinder um, so we can find the volume of that flask at the end of our experiment. Um, then I have the actual unknown. Unknown C that we're going to identify. I'll give you some options um, for what that unknown could be. And again, I've already mentioned the aluminum foil and rubber bands. I'm also going to have a push pin. Um, so when you start heating up this vapor, you start heating up to vaporize your unknown liquid. You don't want to heat something that's closed because um, it could build up pressure and then you could lose all of your sample because the top blows off. Um, so we're going to put a very, very small hole um, in the aluminum foil so that that doesn't happen. Um, you do want to be careful with this small hole because if you make it too big, all of your vapor can escape from your um, flask and it's not going to condense back. We won't get a good molar mass um, for our unknown. Um, so Before I put any chemicals out, I did set up my water bath already, uh, is I want to put my piece of aluminum foil, I want to fit it around my flask, and then I also want to put my rubber band around that. Um, and then I'm going to take that to the balance to find the mass of Okay, remember you always should have something to write with when you go back to the balance. You can write any masses down. I also picked up the barometer so we can get the atmospheric pressure in a minute. Um, so the mass of our flask that's empty is 94.390 grams. Um, and before I turn my hot water bath on, I want to make sure that when I put my flask into it, it's not going to overflow. You don't want to find that your beaker is going to overflow when the water is boiling. You want to find that out now so you can adjust that water level. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my hot plate to get that water um, heated up. We're going to put our flask in there once this water comes to a boil. And so we're just going to turn the heat up about two thirds of the way and then we'll just wait on that to boil. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and add my unknown liquid to my flask and I'm going to measure out about between two and three milliliters. Again, I'm going to use a graduated cylinder to do this. Okay, so we're going to read the outside, the red scale that is in millimeters of mercury. So the barometric pressure in here is going to be 748. 748 millimeters of mercury. So I do see quite a bit of condensation around the neck. I'm not sure that I quite got everything vaporized. I'm going to put it in there. No, I think that was water. Okay, I think this is good. Okay, so I'm just going to let this cool. Okay, our sample has been allowed to cool. So um, if you see some liquid kind of inside that flask, it was supposed to um, condense back. I don't think that you can see any of that. Um, so now I'm gonna take it off of the ring stand, take it back to the balance uh, and get the mass of this so that you can calculate the mass of your vapor. Uh, and then once we have the mass, 
Um, we're going to find the volume of our vapor. So the volume of the vapor is going to be um, the volume of that container. So to get the volume of that container, we can't use the lines on it because it is a flask. That also only goes up like 75% of the way. Um, so what I'm gonna do is fill it all the way to the top with water and then pour that into a graduated cylinder. But first I'm gonna find the mass. The mass of the flask plus the cap uh, and the rubber band and the condensed liquid is 94.557. Uh, now we wanna find the volume of this flask. Okay, so I just have a beaker of water just so that I can pour it into my flask instead of reaching out to that sink. Um, so remember that a, a vapor is going to take up the entire volume of our flask. So to find that entire volume of the flask, we want to fill it all the way to the top with water and then we'll pour it into this graduated cylinder. Okay, and then the volume of our flask here is going to be 151.1, 151.1 milliliters. So now we have the temperature of our vapor. Remember that was the same as the temperature of our water bath. We can find the mass of the condensed liquid. So that's gonna go into that um, uh, equation for molar mass as the mass. Um, the pressure we used our barometer for, the barometer, um, the, the barometric pressure in here. Um, and then you have the volume. Um, so now you can calculate the molar mass of your vapor, uh, and then you'll see some options for identifying what this unknown is. Make sure that you identify the unknown based on its molar mass. So there will be four options of what this unknown could be. Pick the one that's closest to your molar mass that you calculated. Um, while you're doing that, think about some errors that could have been in this experiment. Um, so I don't know if you noticed when I poured my water from my flask to my graduated cylinder, I did kind of pour out a couple of drops on that. Um, so that could affect um, the volume in that calculation. If we had any water that got stuck up between the aluminum foil and our flask from the boiling water, that could have happened. Uh, if we left our flask in the heat too long and we just let all of the vapor go out of our flask. That could cause um, errors in your calculations. So think about those types of things and how that would actually affect the molar mass. So if you have um, a very small, small mass, what is that gonna do to your uh, molar mass as you calculate? If you have a mass that has extra stuff calculated into it, like wetness from our wetness on the flask, what is that gonna do to the molar mass? Um, of your of your calculation.